Hi everyone, Dan Gunner from Insane Forensics. Welcome back to Tech Talk Tuesday, where every week we try to give something to help your threat hunting and security program. In this week, what we're going to talk about is aviation cybersecurity standards. So a few weeks ago, we did a tabletop exercise at a conference. Um, one of the slides in there said something along the lines of aviation doesn't have cybersecurity standards. Someone rightfully called that out. And so part of this talk is um, kind of, hey, we fixed the slides, also educating on what's out there. Um, because when we built that slide, the person that built the slide didn't know um, that they did actually exist. And so today, what we're going to talk about is the standards that TSA push out for airport cybersecurity and for aviation operators. So let's hop right into it. So on March 7th of 2023, TSA issued new cybersecurity requirements, uh, both for airport and aircraft operators, right? So when you think about transportation, you know, how aviation works doesn't all always just happen in airports, right? There's also that, you know, other part of the aircraft operator supply chain. Um, what this did, it's actually was very close to the regulation that was um, released for rail and passenger um, freight carriers. And so, you know, what's interesting, TSA was like, hey, you know, in the past, we looked at this part, now aviation's our important deal. There's four parts of this standard that went out or of this requirement, and we're going to look at each of them. What's interesting with that again, so the four parts of that, network segmentation policies and controls, um, so how you segment your network. We'll see a little later in the presentation, right? Airports, you know, play a lot of functions. There's a lot of things from baggage to the airport Wi-Fi to what's supporting ground ops to the tower to aircraft um, to Air, or to, yeah, to air traffic control and other parts, right? And so within an airport, right, there's a ton of functions that can be segmented. Some of those functions deal with each others, others don't. And as a part of this regulation, something TSA mandated was network segmentation policies and controls on how you both monitor and keep that segmentation. Access control measures, right? Who's getting into where, what, what are they using? You know, understanding again, you have your segmentation now, okay, who's actually going across those lines? Where are users authenticating? How are you handling access management? Because to an airport, right, there's a lot of strangers out there, there's a lot of public, there's a lot of different groups in there. And so keeping people in the right segments and out of the wrong segments is critical. Third part, continuous monitoring. And what's interesting here that differed from that railroad side was, not just for detection, but actually for defending and responding. Um, so not just, um, yeah, so getting into defense and response, because again, detection is great. It's great to be able to raise the red flag, but you know what they push through here is that you have to do more than detect, right? Fourth area that they talked about that was in the press release, and again, we were just able to go off the press release. We weren't able to find the full document. Um, I'm sure it's coming out shortly, um, but... You know, fourth area in there, reducing risk of exploitation through patching, through OS updates, um, and other areas, right? So the other thing that TSA kind of mandated here was airports do need to patch um, both software and their operating systems. So like we said, you know, there's interesting because these four components that came out in March were very similar to what was passed out in the fr to freight and railroad uh, passenger railroad operators. And so what you'll see here, we actually bulleted and underlined the different portions. And so back in October of 2022, they were like, hey, you have to segment the OT network, the part where the cyber physical systems, where the actual operational network is from the IT network. And so back in October for the freight and railroad passengers, they said, hey, you know, segment and look for when it's compromised. It kind of was a one ways phrase to where when you look at what was passed down to the airport and aircraft operators, the only difference is they actually added the and vice versa. And so the regulation here was like, hey, not only are you looking for people jumping from the operational side to the IT side or to the IT side and operational side, right? This is recognition that people can somewhat start in both. They might, you know, depending on where they're at and how they're getting access, they might actually start an OT and pivot the other way and vice versa, right? And so one of the big differences, very similar wording, almost word for word, except that vice versa there. You'll see, you know, create and implement access control measures. Again, that initial word was a little different, uh, but from access control measures, it was pretty consistent. 
for what was passed to railroads, for what was passed to airport and aircraft operators. The third one in here, this is where the difference is, right? So again, look at the railroad one. It just says implement continuous monitoring and detection policies and procedures to get uh, detect threats and correct anomalies. That's where they stopped. So where when you get into the airport and aircraft operator, there's actually a little higher guidance in there to actually defend against it, to respond to cybersecurity threats. So it's not just, are you generating anomalies? Are you monitoring? But it's actually getting into that, okay, do you actually have you know, some ability to actually respond and to defend against these? So very different and interesting wording in there. When you get into patching, you know the patching side was very similar. Again, operating systems, applications, drivers, and firmware were specifically called out. And again, using a risk-based methodology, so like the CVE scores, the other things like that, um, you know, having a program to do this and proving this is a requirement, whether you're on the freight and passenger railroad side or whether you're on the aviation side. An interesting one, though, that made that freight and railroad, passenger railroad one different, and maybe this just wasn't in the press release, is, you know, this wasn't in the airport and aircraft operator, but, you know, freight and passenger railroads, they have to have an assessment program. They have to submit annual plans to TSA on how they're proactively and regularly assessing you know, cybersecurity measures, controls, you know, both around device network and system vulnerabilities. I'm sure, you know, kind of my hunch is maybe we just didn't see that in the press release and it'll get there. But again, until we see the directive that comes down, um, you know, that wasn't part wasn't in the press release. But again, I bet it will be in that directive because again, the the similarity between these two is so close with just some of the wording and intent change. You know, it's good. I bet we'll see that drop out. So, you know, I was talking about airports are complicated, right? So this is one airport information system and some of the databases in here. But what I liked on this diagram, and this was from a UK company, built this out for a UK airport. Um, but you can see there's different parts, right? So airport intranet down on that bottom left, right? You have the airside customers, you have the fuel farm, you have the ramp, you have ops, you have all these other areas. When we talk about segmentation, there's that segmentation you know, inside of whatever service you're using within each of those boxes too. You know, there's multiple vendors on each. And so you know, think of an airport again as just a massive amount of applications and other things, both on the intranet, on the extranet, pushing out. I mean, airports have to share data. There's data going up to OEMs. There's data going out to the public. And so this is where airports actually can get incredibly complicated as you go through, right? And so, you know, when you look at that, what we're trying to show here again is you know, when they're saying, hey, segmentation, some of it can actually be, get really complicated fast, right? But this was kind of just a very quick view of one airport information system. There's a lot of newer ones again for that. And you know, the fact is like, right, and one of the scenarios in that tabletop we ran was options of participants being able to disconnect the internet and just say, hey, we can run this airport internally. You know, the truth of this is the aviation industry depends on the internet. Um, so this is from G's Predix, Predictive Maintenance um, and you know, Support to Operations. So Southwest Airlines saves over a million, a hundred million dollars on fuel um, by having kind of internet connection, 2G applications to pull things up. What they're doing is, you know, Southwest shares out 2G's Predix Cloud, according to this case study. They share out things like passenger loads, cargo loads, weather, you know, amount of fuel on plane, other characteristics. And what G's helping them do is actually figure out what the right amount of fuel is to have on an aircraft. The only way that Southwest is able to do this with the cloud, at least from what's visible in the case study, is through having that link, right? So you know, some of the tabletop things uh, that we put in there on disconnecting internet, you, know, you actually can cut into significant operational savings on this if you aren't careful. So what we wanted to show with this case study again is not only are those segments of an airport network complicated, but there's often operational needs for each of those segments doing things. And there's pretty massive you know, cost savings or cost impacts from screwing with those parts. So again, this was a quick overview of aviation standards, how they compare to the previous rail directive, both for passenger and freight. You 
No, it was designed to kind of talk through and fix a mistake we had made on tabletop slides before um, and to educate also those that might want to learn on what's out there. So thanks for tuning in this week. We hope to see you back next week.